Greetings and welcome to another Mixed Reality video here on the channel and to this rather lovely and magnificent woodland which is in the equally lovely and magnificent tabletop simulator which if you don't know is a program for simulating a tabletop a tabletop upon which you can play many and varied games so if you weren't aware this friday the 31st of march is the nspcc's big board game day which is a yearly event where people play games board games mostly um and raise money for the nspcc which is a great charity here in the uk the national society for the prevention of cruelty to children um last year we got involved, my little nerd group, led by my friend Ed Phipps, uh, who said, hey, wouldn't it be great to not just play a couple of board games at work? I mean, anyone can do that. Oh no, we were going to get together and play board games for 12 hours. A board game marathon, if you will, which I imagine, never having run an actual marathon, is almost exactly identical in the level of uh, physical fitness and mental discipline that you must have in order to perform it. I mean, how hard can it be to run a marathon? You sit down and play board games for 12 hours with all of the mental and uh, physical strains that that puts on your body, um, and then uh, come back and, and tell me. Anyway, we did it last year. It was great fun. Um, we're going to do it again this year, and we're going to improve on last year's efforts by not only playing board games for 12 hours, but we're going to play 12 board games in 12 hours, uh, which for our group, believe me, will be quite an achievement because, you know, I mean, that little thing on the side of the box where it says, you know, estimated... 30 to 90 minutes yeah i mean you can usually double that for, for us and the way that we play games but you know we're going to be good we're going to be focused we're going to be disciplined we're going to make it happen and we're going to make it happen live on twitch and possibly youtube live as well it'll be going out on my channel uh, my twitch channel and probably here on the youtube channel as well if i can figure out how to set all of that up and in preparation for that i thought why not utilize the glory of mixed reality and virtual reality and tabletop simulator in order to to just give you a quick preview of the games that we're going to play in the order that we're going to play them um, because you know I mean it, it's something to do isn't it it's, it's something to do so kicking off the board game marathon is Samurai which is a classic tile placement game um, you play a feudal Japanese lord hell-bent on improving or increasing his power and influence over the feudal Japanese lands as represented by this hexagonal map here or hex grid map I should say um, and there are three resources as a feudal Japanese lord that you are primarily interested in. They are the resources, if you will, that are most important, most vital to feudal Japanese life. And they are, of course, helmets, uh, which sort of look like little shards for some reason. You probably can't really see that. Shall I just... Um, one of the advantages of a virtual table is I could just kind of like nonchalantly stroll through it when uh, the need arises, also without even disturbing it, which I think is just lovely. Can you see that? If I like hold it up there, I don't know if that's even where the camera actually is. It's like a shard thing. Anyway, that's a helmet. Uh, helmets, rice, of course. I mean, you know, you can't go long in Japan without having control of some rice. It's just not the done thing. If you're a fueled Japanese lord and you don't have at least a few rice paddies, frankly, um, you're just going to get laughed out of the dojo. Uh, and of course, finally, Buddhas. I mean, Buddhas. If you, Buddhas are, I like Buddhas are just everything. Everybody should have a Buddha statue um, on for a pillow. Everybody needs a Buddha for a pillow. Everybody needs a Buddha. That's what I'm told. Um, so there we go. Those are your three resources that you're primarily after. At the start of the game, you place these onto uh, these various different control points. So each of these little white uh, hexes here uh, that's got like a picture of uh, like a little fort or whatever it is uh, each of these is, is control points and you assign each one a resource that they have at their disposal and the goal is to try and secure those resources and each resource is secured by surrounding it uh, with your tiles with your little hexagonal tiles so once a resource is completely surrounded um, you score it if you've got more uh, for example uh, this one which has a Buddha on it uh, it's got three Buddhas three Buddhas for a pillow right there three Buddhas for a pillow um, so you would total up your Buddha score around a Buddha one, and if you'd scored it, great, you would get to keep it. And it would be awesome. That's basically how you play. The rules are very simple. Um, you, you kind of have, each person has their own stack of these tiles. You have a little hand of them that you can play from at any given time. Uh, but there is a, an awful lot of strategic depth when you actually get down to it. There's a lot of blocking and counter-moving people. There's a few, um, like you've got some ship tokens in here. Uh, which can only go in these little sea tiles. You've got samurai that score against anything. It's 
very interesting and tactically detailed game. Um, so there you go, that's it. I said I wasn't going to go into too much detail, so I shall say no more about Samurai. If you're interested in seeing the game in action, then you'll just have to tune in at 7 a.m. Uh, on, on Friday, Friday the 31st of March. That's when we'll be playing. We expect this game to take an hour and a half. Leading on from this one, we're going to stick with the Japanese theme, and we're going to go for King of Tokyo, which I actually haven't played, and I don't know how to play, and I don't really know anything about it, other than the fact that it has these cool dice, um, which look like, I mean, they're lovely dice. Look, it's, I don't know if you can see that. It's, it's got a lovely heart on it. Anyway, you can't see it because it's continually facing it towards me, but it's got a beautiful heart on it, which I take to mean that uh, it's a game of just love and happiness and, you know, doing lovely things to Tokyo, which appears to be on fire. It also appears to have the Statue of Liberty in it, which is a little bit odd, but I don't know, maybe there's a Statue of Liberty in Tokyo. Um, there are two zones, Tokyo City and Tokyo Bay. Uh, is there anything else on this dice? Wait a minute, there's like a lightning bolt. There is a lightning bolt, which might imply uh, death and destruction. It's quite possible. Um, it, let me just throw it. Throw the dice. And also, a paw print, um, which I think perhaps is the greatest hint yet that it is not a game of loveliness, happiness, and uh, indeed love and things. And just to kind of like underline that, um, there we've got these massive great big things over here. Look, let's bring these onto the board. We've got Mecha Dragon, and <laughs> look at this guy, Pandaki. Look, here we go. Let me just hold those out to the camera. Where's the camera? Is the camera over there? It's like around here somewhere. Pandaki. And uh, this other guy, Mecha Dragon. Also, we've got another two. We've got. Uh, alienoid and cyber bunny <laughs> is it actually it is actually a bunny it's a bunny in a giant robot suit um is that am i even holding these out towards the camera there we go look we got those two uh cyber bunny and uh, alienoid and these two mecha dragon and pandaki who <laughs> it's gotta be i mean pandaki is is like he, he seems to be a giant panda or I probably I should say a giant giant panda because he's like bigger than a building here and it's got what looks like a piece of bamboo but considering his size I mean that would be one hell of a bamboo plant right there maybe I assume that this is like radioactive he's like a radioactive giant giant panda clearly um, that's the only possibility for achieving a giant panda key monster type thing um, let's see what else we've got we've got uh, the king here <laughs> The king, who of course is like King Kong, only you can't be King Kong, uh, apparently, for maybe for copyright reasons, and equally for copyright reasons, Gigazor, who is not Godzilla, he is Gigazor, um, and uh, finally, um, possibly the best, Unleash the Kraken, um, who will of course come from his undersea home, and uh, if he's really unlucky, he might get turned to stone, but um, hopefully not, hopefully he'll just rampage around and uh, possibly crush destroy and maim um so there we go uh, like i don't really know how to play this game so there's nothing more that i can say about it if you want to find out uh, how king of tokyo plays and what is involved like i said before with with uh, samurai you're just gonna have to tune in and find out uh 8 30 is when we're expecting to start this game it's a pretty short game so we've only allotted half an hour for it so 8 30 till 9 uh, is when we are intending to play and if you miss the live stream obviously there will be an opportunity after the fact to watch all these things um, in some kind of recorded fashion probably unless it turns out to be absolutely atrocious in which case we might just rapidly delete it and forget that we ever did it anyway sticking with the Japanese theme the third game is Shinobi Clans which I couldn't find a module for on Tabletop Simulator so I shall just stick artwork up around me uh, to give you the gist of what it looks like it's got beautiful artwork actually it's a card game uh, it has a drafting mechanic which is actually really interesting you you open draft so you put a series of cards down face up on the table and then people take it in turns to pick them up and put them into their hands so you, you get a very clear idea of what people are picking up um, and the goal is to either assassinate or to protect a series of important people so you're either placing down ninjas to assassinate or you're placing down like samurais in order to uh, protect and to guard them and prevent them from being uh, destroyed and basically you kind of you you bet or you you take a contract on what you're going to do for each of those people in secret at the start of the round and so you like everybody might be trying to protect the same person one person might be trying to protect him one person might be trying to assassinate him um, and indeed you might be not trying to do anything at all to a particular individual so there's a lot of kind of mind games about it there's a lot of trying to second guess what other people are doing and decide where to commit your resources great game really interesting it's a good fun game we We've allowed an hour for that one, uh, so that takes us from 9 through to 10, and then 
The fourth game in the marathon and pretty much rounding out the morning takes us away from Japan and into the piratey Caribbean in Blackfleet, which is, as I may have hinted at, a pirate trading game, a piratey trading game, um, where you move ships around. It's got a beautiful board. It's got all these lovely minis and stuff, uh, or like plastic playing pieces, I suppose, would be a more accurate description. Um, and the goal in this is simply to make money any way you can, and there's a couple of ways you do it. Unlike a lot of piratey trading games that I've tried in the past, in this you control both the pirate and a trader at the same time. So you don't have to decide, oh, am I going to be a pirate, am I going to be a trader, and inevitably the two professions are not properly balanced, and in the end you just go, well, it's just, there's no reason to ever be a pirate, I'll just trade and make vast quantities of money that way. Oh no, in Blackfleet, there are no such decisions to be made, for you can control, as I say, both of them, and indeed, uh, one of these two neutral navy ships, which, like, hunt your pirates. So basically, pirates hunt traders, um, traders trade, and neutral ships hunt pirates. That's the gist of it. You move around the board, it's got a few interesting mechanics to it, actually, I have to say. Um, the traders are obviously trying to pick up uh, trade goods from one port, for example, Santa Claudia, which makes the finest blue in all the world. it's the They make the finest blue cubes that you can imagine, and you can export those to any of the ports that accept blue. They don't accept blue in uh, Porte de, de Cruz, because I guess they're just too close. They're too close. They've grown bored of their blue. Um, there is no interest for them in blue in this particular port, but they will accept uh, blue in any of the other ports on the map. Um, and likewise, you know, they all have their, their trading partners. There is, um, there is blue, there is the finest yellow, there is also purple, and red and it looks like I mean it looks like yellow is maybe corn purple tobacco maybe it looks like a leaf uh, and uh, red looks kind of like a stack of red jelly I think that's probably what it is it's almost certainly a stack of red jelly I mean it could be a barrel but let's just go with the red jelly because frankly the idea that we're trading um, piles and piles of red jelly between ports makes far more sense to me it seems like the most epic thing that I could seek to do in fact I might have to just purely focus on trading of the red jelly I, I will be the greatest red jelly trader in all of the Caribbean when I'm not also pirating people for their red jelly um, which I can then bury at a series of spots around here um, it's got these like basically you move by using these cards which tells you the color oops tells you the color of the uh, neutral ship that you're allowed to move and the distance you're allowed to move it the distance you're allowed to move your pirate ship and the distance you're allowed to move your trade ship there are also these other cards which you hold in your hand which are basically kind of shenanigans cards if you will for example secret orders uh, if you move if your navy ship doesn't move this turn gain two doubloons so there you go if you if you can move a navy ship and you don't move it you gain two doubloons doubloons are how you win look doubloons are here look at these doubloons these are awesome so many doubloons i don't think the actual doubloons in the play in the game are quite as big as this um but that's the joy of virtual reality for you you can just have all the shiny doubloons uh at whatever in fact you know what? we can make them bigger we can make them we can make them way way bigger um which uh, hello help me i'm suddenly sunk hold on let's uh let's go up up the way up the way here we go up to the table uh now the doubloons what that's so enormous! Vast doubloons! They're not actually supposed to be that big. That's because I was um, <laughs> inadvertently previewing them. Um, there we go. Lovely doubloons. Lovely, lovely doubloons. Um, you win the game by buying all of your available upgrade cards, which do all sorts of funky things, like letting you sell at different ports for different money, or giving you insurance, extra guns, the ability to pirate better, loads of cool upgrades that you can buy. Um, it's a really good game. We've allowed ourselves an hour and a half for this game, which I have a sneaking suspicion may be a little bit optimistic, but that'll take us through till 11.30, possibly 12. There'll be no breaking for lunch, though. We'll be cracking straight on with the next game. So that's the first four games that we'll be playing on Friday, as this video has already gone on for considerably longer than I had originally intended. Um, I'm just going to leave it there and I will do another video covering the next four games or possibly the next eight games, depending on if I can fit them all into one video or if I need to split it into two. And those will come out in the run up to uh, this Friday. If you can join me, uh, uh, join us, in fact, on Twitch or on YouTube during the day, it would be great to have you. It would be great to, to see you there. Um, obviously, if you can make a donation, that would be amazing too the just giving page is linked in the description it's already live or you can wait till the day and do it on the day if you want um, indeed you can try and elicit various things from us on the live stream in return for your donations if you're feeling particularly nefarious um, now if we do particularly well this year if we beat our previous 250 pound record from last year then 
I think I'm quietly confident I can convince the nerds to make next year's a 24-hour board game marathon, a true marathon, if you will. Uh, so if that's something that you would find <laughs> some kind of pleasure in, possibly an evil and malicious pleasure in watching us slowly deteriorate over 24 hours of board gaming craziness, then, um, you know, donate, make it happen. Uh, but until next time, I, in a giant sort of wading around in the Caribbean, um, wizardy awesome form uh, we'll see you later until then thanks a lot for watching I have been weird wizard the giant and I will see you later